Well, good morning and welcome to Zen Live and, the, and ideas that can change your world. Let me start my timer. And yesterday, uh, and yesterday evening, I was both talking about uh, my uh, uh, yoga name, Prabhakar, and trying to um, explain what it meant. And uh, so today I'm kind of like, uh, <laughs> so I really was high on it yesterday, but it was a very, it was a revelation to me in the sense that uh, I was getting, trying to name an open-ending, open-ended mind that has awakened in me that synthesizes the dots of reality like Sherlock. Now, Sherlock Holmes is a archetype of the detective who suspends judgment and just collects the evidence and synthesizes them and integrates them until he comes up with a single idea that solves the murder. You get the idea? It's a, it's a process. And we love these mysteries uh, because they all recreate the same archetype of Sherlock Holmes and basically the uh, Sherlock Holmes is a name for a function of the mind that is open-ended and does not prejudge reality according to its presuppositions or assumptions of what reality is. So whenever there's a Sherlock, there's always somebody, another detective or somebody who says, well, I know who it is. Uh, those, that, those clues don't mean anything. Uh, this, is where, this is the guy who did it. And the Sherlock always says, well, wait, we have to include, the single idea has to include all of the clues. And you don't know when that single idea is going to leap into the mind full-blown. It doesn't come in parts. It comes full-blown. All scientific inventions and artistic creations come full-blown into the artist's mind. And then the artist just takes that conception and works it out in the art or in the scientific language or mathematic formulas. This is well documented. The, the inception, the single idea, leaps into the mind when the mind has relaxed its effort to discover it. And we experience this all the time when, what is that word that's on the tip of my tongue? And then you forget about it and then, oh, or the crossword puzzle or whatever. Oh, I knew it all the time. I just couldn't find it. Well, it hadn't been created. <laughs> anyway. So this morning I was talking about uh, the uh, uh, post, the, the world we're living in, and it looks to me, if you want a metaphor that tries to explain or understand the insanity of the world we're in now, uh, it's a chess game. And so let's pay chess here. We got. Uh, Okay, we got our little squares, and we got a little man, see, and all that, and we got here, and we got here, and we got the table, and we're playing chess, okay? So each one, if this is reality, then it is split into two halves. And these are mirrors. Mirror, mirror. Okay, they reflect each other. Because the world is one, reality is one, but we're perceiving it today as two. And so we have to discover the one. So the game, you see, of chess is to arrive at the one, which means one loses 
and the game now, you are the winner, is the one. And this is kind of like the American uh, formula for creativity and progress. Progress through competition. And it's also in our sports. We don't like to have two winners. You got to have one winner. And they keep fighting until you come up with the one. Two is ambiguous. You can't live with ambiguous. What do you mean there's two heavyweight? What do you mean there's two presidents? What do you mean there's two corporate heads? You know, the head has to be one. So we keep fighting to get to the one. Well, today we're in this postmodern paradox where if this side trying to get to be the one, he moves this way. And I say, maybe this is the left. And this is the right. And this says, I check, I check that with this move. And then this move, well, I come up with this reality. And this one says, well, I check that with this reality. And then I check that with this reality. And then I check that with this reality. So whatever reality we come up with as the one, the other side checks it and balances it. It's called false equivalence. So the media comes up with news and Trump says, I checked that with my news. And then the media comes up with more evidence and he, Trump comes up with more. That's just, a, that's just the big chessboard in the sky. Trump versus the media. That's the big chessboard. It's just like we're watching a paradigm or a metaphor for our own individual games of chess in a world that can't find the one because it keeps dividing it. You see, we're, you, we must find the one because reality is one. God is one. The one without a second drives evolution and the evolution of consciousness. The whole cosmos has the intent to create the one. Hegel came up with the dialectic of progress. The dialectic of process is basically a th thesis, you have the one, and then that breaks into anti-thesis. Now you got two, and then that creates tension, wah, 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 and that creates a synthesis, a new baby is born. And then that divides and creates and it keeps going on. So that is kind of like a mathematical formula for this dialectic. So right now in the postmodern world we're kind of like right here. And it looks like we're insane. It looks like mankind has entered into schizophrenia, a collective schizophrenia, or worse, a psychosis. Schizophrenia kind of like means a divided world. So we're kind of like in a schizophrenic stage. And the fear is psychosis. The psychosis is basically no, no center. Here we have two centers. Two centers. I'm real, you're not. I'm real, you're not. And so Psychosis is nothing's real. <laughs> you know, it's just chaos. There's no center to enter. That's the terror we all live in, us humans, is to fall into this psychosis where there is no integrating consciousness. There is no self. It's just data. It's just a nightmare of data with no organizing principle. So these are organizing principles of reality. But our world now is split so that anything that comes up is immediately split into two opposing halves. You can just watch this. Don't believe me, check it out. Everything that is born is immediately split into two and the chessboard game continues. Check, 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 check. No, I check you. No, I check you. No, I check you. No, you're checked. No, now you're checked. America and North Korea, chess game. I raise one missile, I will raise you two sanctions. I will raise you another missile, I will raise you five sanctions. I will raise you a ballistic missile uh, with a warhead on it, and I will raise you, uh, 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 
I'll blow you up with an atomic bomb. And then oh, I will raise you with a hydrogen bomb. Well, I will raise you with two hydrogen bombs. Well, I will raise you with 10 hydrogen bombs. Now I'm going to raise you with 30 hydrogen bombs. At some point, the thing will blow up. You see, because there's no search for the one here. There's no search for a creative solution because we're in a particular point in human history in the evolution of our collective consciousness where everything splits into two. It's a, it's a, it's a belief in absolute duality. It's a belief that duality is absolute. Yet at the same time, there is a heartfelt soul belief that there is the one. But you see, what we do here is that the reality locked in time puts the one future. Okay? So where is the one when you are in time? Well, it's tomorrow. Or, well, when I die, I'll go to a better place, which means I'll go to the one that has no second. So even death is better than this place, you see, because the one is in death. Or tomorrow. Or Trump says we will restore the one by going back backwards. The progressives say we will create the one by going forward. So one each each progressives and Trump are trying to get to the one. One's going in the past, the other one's going forward. So one this side here, if say this is the progressives and this is the conservatives or Trump as a personification of that, then this one says, well, we're going to get to the one by including more. And this one says, we're going to get to the one by excluding more. How can you balance that? How can you come to a compromise with that? You see, that's just a mirror. If you look in a mirror, it's opposite of you. So if I'm trying to in reach the one by inclusion, my opposite is going to say, well, I'm going to reach the one by exclusion. It's a reflection of the other. But we are blind to that. And that in Buddhism, that's called ignorance. It's not a sin. It's not fate. It's not ordained. It's just a turning away from the one that is not in time, but now. See, And this is the creative act. Whenever we discover the one, whenever you have a realization, whenever you have an aha, whenever you see a MacGyver instance in which you see all the parts available and you create something new, whenever you see everything available and you create a new idea, a new tool, a new way, you see, that's not in the future, that's now. Everything we need for happiness is now. Everything we need for the one is now. Everything we need to transcend our situation is now. But we believe, because we are locked in time, we believe in a reality that is time-space bound. This is the fundamental assumption of the modern world that began with the Enlightenment. I hope you can follow with me, because I tend to jump around. Prabhakar tends to jump around. <laughs> so the modern world that began with the Enlightenment was the belief that there is an external reality that is governed by natural laws, either by, by nature or by science, by God, and that through reason, man can discover these laws and change the world for the better. You can control the world if you discover the laws, and the world exists out there, and we are the scientists, and we are objectively looking at this external reality, and we all agree that this external reality of, the, of this room, the sofa, the chair, everything exists outside of me. Well, the postmodern world 
broke that up because it began to see that, and scientists now affirms that with the quantum physics, is that the scientist creates the reality he is discovering through the experiments he chooses. So we are co-creators in reality. Just as each of us is a co-creator of the world or the meaning of the world. Now this doesn't mean that I create this thing, all of this is a creation from an idea. So it's kind of like we end up with the realist and the idealist. So the realist says, well, it's all, this is, it's just everything is, this is things. All these things are what they are. You know, everything is a thing and everything just existed outside of me. And the idealist says, well, it was all created by the idea, the mind. So you get matter and mind. This is a mirror reflection. The one is both matter mind. The one is both you world. Uh, the one is both innocent guilty. The one is ambiguous. The one is yin yang. Not two, but an ambiguous one. And this ambiguity, because it's intolerable, creates a new world that includes the ambiguity but transcends it. A new idea includes the parts, is greater than the parts, but it includes the parts. And we know this. I mean, everything is an idea of a one. A one thing includes all the things that made it up, but the one thing is greater than the parts. You can't find, you can't break the one apart and come up with the one. The whole includes all of the ingredients, a recipe. You have a delicious recipe. It includes all the ingredients, but the taste, the enjoyment of that meal is greater than some flour and some sugar and whatnot, you see. I'm always amazed with uh, uh, my wife uh, and, and other cooks will read them, will look at a recipe and experience the meal, I guess, just flour and sugar and salt. It's just parts. But they can imagine, oh, that's going to taste so good. Oh, you see, that's the whole. That's a world. When you mm, taste it, you see, that's, that's a world you're living in. It has feeling. It has reality. It's not just an idea made of uh, pieces which are other ideas, you see, it's, mwah, that's real, that makes it real. When you cook, when you cook, when you put the ingredients together, and when you create a recipe, you're still hanging in there with me, when you create a recipe, which is a whole, a single idea, you integrate all the parts, and you come up with a taste, mm. and that taste is not ambiguous. That taste is not divided into a good taste and a bad taste. The taste of the meal, the experience of the meal, is whole. There's no, there's no division in it. Unless you, well, I like it and I don't like it. Well, most people will take that meal. A lot of people will take the meal. And one person says, oh, perfect. And the other person, well, it needs a little more salt. It could be better. And then even if they put a little more salt in it, and they would come back and taste, ah, it needs a little more Tabasco. Could be better. So that's, that's, some people look at the world that way. It's always going to be better. In time, the one is all, the perfect one, the perfect taste is always going to be tomorrow. Can't find it now. And then another person says, well, everything is, I, I, whatever is, whatever is brought to be, I'll eat it. I like it. I don't judge it. I accept it. This is, oh, thank you so much for this uh, rather bland oatmeal. Oh, thank you so much for this delicious breakfast with uh, potatoes and eggs and bacon. Thank you so much. I don't compare it to the oatmeal and say, oh, this is not as good as the oatmeal. Or I don't compare the oatmeal to the eggs and bacon. 
everything is okay. Just I accept this, this thank you so much for what is given. This is a religious point of attitude, by the way, th being thankful for what is given. That restores the one. If you're thankful for what is given, there is no, it could be better. There is no, eh, you didn't do a good job. Eh, I could have done it better. Eh, this is no good. That's projecting the one into the future. It could be better tomorrow. Get a better cook. Move. It'll be better when you move. Always better tomorrow. The one is always tomorrow. But the, but the realization that the one is now, the power of now, Eckhart Tolle, is a transformative idea that changes your life forever. It doesn't mean you can't add a little more salt. It doesn't mean you can't make the meal better. But at the same time, the ground underneath that duality of it could be better is that reality is one as it is. Reality is already, always one. And then you can make it a little better. But if you can't stand on the one that has no second, then you are trapped in time and misery and seeking the one tomorrow and hating where you are now. Self-loathing. I loathe this world because it's not the perfect world I imagine in the future. So, let's stop there. My little bell rang and uh, I hope we can hope this idea uh, helps make your one taste a little better. <laughs>